As we think about the future of autonomous vehicles, we imagine a Jetsons-like world where no one needs to drive. In this future world, we'll be able to call a car to pick us up from wherever we may be, and then we can hop into the car and nap or watch videos while the car drives us to our next destination. We imagine that a world of autonomous vehicles will be safer. The software in an autonomous vehicle doesn't get sleepy, it doesn't drive drunk, it doesn't experience road rage, it won't get distracted by a text or experience a sudden heart attack. But in a world of autonomous vehicles, will you be considered negligent for driving your own car? A classic 1930s case about the TJ Hooper tugboat can give us some insight about when it becomes negligent to resist using new technology. The New England Coal Company wanted to ship some coal from Norwalk, Virginia to New York. They hired a tugboat company and a barge company to ship their coal. The first tugboat, the TJ Hooper, carried three barges of coal. The second tugboat, the Montrose, tugged another three. In early March of 1928, the two tugboats and barges of coal sailed towards New York. When the tugboat set out, the weather was still nice. But because neither of the tugboats had radio sets, they were not able to hear the weather forecasts, which warned of an increasing winds and rain. Four other tugs heard the report and suspended their journey. The TJ Hooper and Montrose, however, did not hear the report and continued on. The next morning, the winds began to rise and eventually reached 40 or 50 miles per hour. Two barges began to leak and eventually sank. The coal company sued the owner of the barges that had sunk. The barge owners, in turn, sued the tug owners. Judge Hand found the tugboats negligent because they did not have the new technology of radio receivers, even though, Hand noted, this technology was not industry standard at the time. Judge Hand's holding creates a puzzle. If it was not yet industry standard, why did Judge Hand say that it was negligent for the tugboat owner not to have a radio receiver? There may have been some implicit law and economics reasoning behind Judge Hand's holding. In his opinion, Hand highlighted the low cost of a radio receiver and seemed to imply that a reasonable company, in exercising its duty of reasonable care, ought to be equipped with one. Law and economics theorists today would compare the cost of a safety precaution against the probability of an accident times the cost of an accident. Using the law and economics lingo, we ask ourselves, is B less than P times L? If B, the safety precaution, is less, that means the safety precaution is cheaper than paying for the accident. Therefore, it is more efficient, more reasonable, to install a safety precaution. We apply this formula to the TJ Hooper case. In the 1930s, a radio cost about $10. Let's say without a radio, there is a 1% chance of a tugboat accident, and that the total cost of the lost cargo and ship in an accident is $10,000. Therefore, B equals $10 and P times L equals $100. As Judge Hand implies, it is efficient to install the radio as a safety precaution. If the goal of law is to promote efficiency, a reasonably prudent tugboat owner would buy a radio and would be negligent if he failed to do so. What does a ruling about tugboats have to do with autonomous vehicles? Research shows that semi-autonomous cars could be on the road in the next one to two years. While we don't know exactly how much safer autonomous vehicles will be than human-driven cars, some estimate that they could save as many as 300,000 lives per decade in the United States. But if an autonomous car is therefore orders of magnitude safer than a human-driven car, at what point would it become negligent to drive your own car, just as it would be negligent to operate a tugboat without a radio receiver? Let's look at where we are today. If you were to go out and buy a car at this very instant, would you be negligent for buying a regular old car that you have to drive yourself? Using the same law and economics formula we applied to the tugboats, we ask ourselves, is B less than P times L? Recent estimates suggest that in 2025, prices for autonomous vehicle technology will start around $10,000. Using statistics from the 2010 National Safety Administration report, there is a 1.3% chance of an automobile accident. In 2010, the average cost of each U.S. automobile accident, including property, loss of life, and pain and suffering, was $221,459. When we plug in the numbers, we get B equals 10,000 
and P times L equals 2,879. According to our calculations, the cost of the safety precaution is more expensive than the cost of the expected accident. Law and economics would tell us it is not efficient and therefore not expected that a reasonably prudent person buy an autonomous vehicle. So, if you don't feel like dropping $10,000 on autonomous vehicle technology anytime soon, you're in the clear. Law and economics will not find you negligent for driving your own car today. But say, for example, we reach a point where fully autonomous vehicles still aren't customary among private individual drivers, but they are the norm in the commercial ride hailing and ride sharing industry. The popular deployment of driverless cars by companies such as Uber and Lyft will have an effect on price. Manufacturing economies of scale can be expected to drive down the cost of the technology for individual and commercial consumers alike. At a certain point, costs will be low enough to flip our BPL analysis such that B would now be less than PL, and it would therefore be efficient to have an autonomous vehicle. Applying the Hooper holding then, a driver could be held negligent for not having an autonomous vehicle, even if they are not yet custom among private car owners. This leads us to a surprising conclusion. In a situation like this, the majority of drivers could be negligent. The fact that most people have not yet adopted the technology would not bear on liability. This could leave us with a few concerns. What about the distributive effect? It may be that cost has fallen relatively, but remains high in absolute terms. In other words, the outcome of the legal economic analysis might have flipped, but price is still prohibitively high for the lower income factions of society. Those who still cannot afford a driverless car would continue to operate traditional ones, placing them at correspondingly higher risk of crash and, under the Hooper test, accident liability. A final concern. What about preferences? Safety might not be the only variable in the equation. It might be that car owners just like driving and being in control of their vehicles and would therefore resist the switch to full automation. This issue leaves us with some broader questions as well. What should the future legal regime for autonomous cars look like? How can it accommodate these distributional and efficiency concerns? In our view, perhaps the government should provide subsidies to allow everyone access to the safety of autonomous vehicles, or we should simply abandon this pure efficiency model. As much as we would want tort law to incentivize the adoption of safer technology, we should be equally concerned about how safety might be unequally allocated.